Welcome back to Ruapuna Speedway's Methanol Madness. We had a bit of a false start to our opening meeting a couple of weeks ago with the rain coming in a little bit earlier than we hoped for AJ, but it was great to get a glimpse of what we can expect this season. Oh, it was a start, wasn't it? And you know, look at the buy-in we had from competitors, a lot of competitors, damn good crowd too, considering the conditions that were sort of prevailing. We thought we'd, we'd get away with it, but no, eventually a couple of wooden changes too many and we took the lot. Yeah, unfortunately. So to get the show started tonight, we're going to kick it off with our Conquer Crash of the Week. We take a look back at Ellesmere Speedway's meeting last Sunday, which unfortunately evolved a number of our Christchurch TQ drivers. AJ, this one was pretty unfortunate. A lot of carnage happening down the straight here at Ellesmere with plenty of competitors involved, unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately, and, and it's one of those things that was like rush hour traffic, wasn't it? And, and mm. there's just so many cars and so much of a condensed sort of situation. All it took was one car to get slightly off the line, and that's what happened. And uh, you know what? The, there was very little time for anyone to respond to that. Mm. You can just see that um, as they go out wider, Jeremy Webb down on the inside, he just drifted out slightly, and um, you've got Scott Bailey. He tries to respond, but it's left front against right rear and it's all over and Malachi Webb stuck in amongst that as well and then you've got drivers taking evasive action and they all get knotted up. You're really unfortunate um, but yeah peak hour traffic sort of stuff. Mm, a shame to see a number of our newbies in there as well, Blake Finlay, um, Olivia Stewart, Brooke Clark involved there as well, Lockie Brett towards the end. There was almost too many to name, um, but obviously wishing speedy recoveries to all of those drivers. And I believe we will see most of them back this weekend, which is really good news that nobody suffered too much damage that was um, they were unable to recover from AJ. So very lucky there that, that everyone's okay and, and that the racing was able to continue. Yeah, it's always been a byproduct of the TQs. However, you know, they are, they are packed racing, mm -hmm. essentially. You know, mm -hmm. when you've got a big field like that, 21 odd cars mm -hmm. on, a, on a quarter mile dirt track, um, it's, you know, you're jam patchy sardine sort of country. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just a byproduct of TQ racing. So next up, we're going to take a look at the racing that we did get in before the rain settled in with the Ruapuna Speedway Review of the Week. Starting with the quarter midgets who only got their first heat race in, first place went to Lucas Smith, second Jackson Clark, third Jackson Kedsley. It was great to see some of those young ones improving on their pace too, AJ, the likes of Georgia Lewis, Isabel Harris right up there with the rest of them. Yeah, how good. And, and one good observation is to sort of watch these kids at the beginning of the season mm -hmm. and then sort of make a mark and then you just follow their progress throughout the season and uh, some of these kids are so talented and, mm -hmm. and again you know close quarter stuff there's 18, 19, 20 quarter midgets out there and uh, there is a big uh, variation between um, you wouldn't say talent but ability you mm -hmm. know some of these kids have got a couple of years under their belt mm -hmm. and the newbies they, they have to adapt or they're going to get spat out the back and I don't see any of them getting spat out. No. The TQs were also out there with full force with plenty of numbers as usual, split into groups just due to the sheer number of how many of them there are on track at one time. They got to squeeze in their first two heats into the program, but it was Caden Barker winning them both, AJ, a nice start to his South Island trip. Yeah, good start for him, and he's really going to add a lot of spice to the TQs this mm -hmm. year. Um, one uh, old hand said to me the New Zealand Championship aren't won at the opening meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what Caden Barker did, he, he sort of said, I'm here, mm -hmm. take me seriously, mm -hmm. and I'm here to learn. And um, Jeremy Webb, he's a very smart operator, exceedingly um, skilled mm -hmm. and uh, very experienced, and he's got some old heads behind him as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but they will know that there's going to be some competition this year, mm -hmm. and Caden Barker was very impressive. Mm -hmm. I agree. So first place in the first heat race went to Caden Barker, second place Scott Bailey, third Jamie Booth, and in the second heat also won by Caden Barker, second went to Jeremy Webb and third place Malachi Webb. AJ, that one was kind of like you've got Caden out the front there and then obviously Jeremy, five-time New Zealand champion, and then Malachi in his rookie year racing almost like a veteran on that track as well. Malachi Webb's going to be real, a real dark horse in the TQs this year. You know, for, mm -hmm. for someone who's reasonably fresh out of the quarter midgets into TQs and mm -hmm. just showing that raw ability mm -hmm. um, and got some good equipment too. So keep an eye on, on him. Mm -hmm. I told you, um, you know, you heard it here first, Louise. Mm -hmm. Malachi Webb. 
I agree. I, I think that, I mean, he was impressive in the quarter midget as well and seeing how quickly that he's already stepped into the into the TQ grade and um, it'll be interesting to see how he progresses the rest of yeah. the season and hopefully that crash at Ellesmere in the weekend didn't knock him too much. Yeah, I think that actually shows a big part of the value of the quarter midgets. Mm -hmm. the, the kids get that track craft, they start off as being fairly raw. Some of them have come out of grass carts and mm -hmm. things like that, but on a speedway they're raw mm -hmm. and they learn everything and they also learn that they've got a limited amount of power mm -hmm. and so they've got to use it very wisely and then they go into TQs which is a class mm -hmm. of very much like quarter midgets in the respect that you know there is X amount of power, mm -hmm. use it wisely mm -hmm. and um, Malachi Webb, he, he's got a very, very clever right foot. Next up, let's take a look at the modified sprints, which as we talked about in episode one, they've seen significant growth this season, which is great to see. There are a few lead changes in their heat race with Shane Tonkin losing the lead after a little bit of contact. Jamie Duff was then leading until the last lap when Liam Astor successfully hunted him down for the win. AJ, it was cool to see the Duff man take on the modified sprint class. I'm not surprised he turned up to race something. <laughs> um, you know what, if there wasn't a race car for him, I'd say he'd probably set a pretty good time in the water truck. <laughs> but uh, it's that ability that that guy has got. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he brought something to the field. I was really impressed with Shane Tonkin. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sort of came into it at the end of the, or towards the latter part of last season. Mm -hmm. And, you know, was sort of mid-pack to sort of the back of the front lot. Mm -hmm. And uh, showed some really good um, sort of lines. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, yeah, but unfortunate that there was that contact. Mm. But uh, yeah, Shane Tonkin, another one. That class is wide open now. Mm -hmm. And um, Liam Astor, he, he's going to be, you know, perhaps a pace hitter, mm -hmm. but with no Craig Cox here now, <laughs> she's game on for everyone else. Yeah. The official results there in their heat race first place, Liam Astor, second place, Jamie Duff, and third place went to Brett Booth. Then we saw Corey Duckmanton take out the heat win in the V6 wingless sprints, followed closely by Kirk Hawkins, who had a couple of hairy moments in that heat race, and Mark Morris in third. It was great to see Ruben Fortune out there carving in a few laps, but it's pretty action-packed as always in the V6 wingless. Oh, well, so don't forget uh, what happened to Kirk Hawkins with his last outing at mm -hmm. the end of last season. He went for a real bell ringer, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a couple of times he sort of got a bit of a bicycle on one of them down the prison bend was at the point where I'm going, oh, oh shooter's on his way again. But what a confidence booster for the duck. You know, mm. Corey Duck Manton um, came into Speedway just because he absolutely loves motorsport. Um, started as a sponsor at the Speedway mm -hmm. and now he's gone into the wingless sprints and uh, he would be probably still celebrating now. Mm -hmm. In the midget class, Ben Morgan never looked back from the drop of the green. Second place went to Jay Chadwick, third to Liam McCubrey. Pretty interesting to see how quick Liam, uh, Ben was, sorry, straight out of the bat with that one, racing his new car, of course, AJ. Yeah, very quick. He, he mm. uh, adapted to it very, very quickly. Mm. And, uh, you know, we, we're still waiting for Jack Lowe to turn up mm. and two or three others, uh, Tom Lumsden, you know, Glenn mm. Jury. Mm. Um, but I think by the time those guys hit the track, uh, ben Morgan is really going to have his flag right mm -hmm. at the top of the pole. Uh, I felt a little bit sorry for Liam McCubrey. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think there was a hell of a lot in what they penalised him two spots for, but mm -hmm. you know the officials see what they see. They have to respond to mm -hmm. that sort of thing. But uh, Liam McCubrey, um, get a few more laps under him again this mm -hmm. season, and, and he tends to start a little bit slowly. Mm -hmm. um, boy, he's going to really be right in amongst it. Mm, I agree. Last but not least, just as the rain started to really settle in, the sprint cars put on a show in their heat race. Leversidge was like a magnet to Bourne, AJ, but unable to make that pass. Oh, he tried so hard, didn't yeah. he? And, and Caleb Bourne, uh, he's sort of been a little bit of an enigma. He, he showed a heck of a lot of promise, mm -hmm. won the War of the Wings, and then the next year, you know, he wasn't quite so dominant and, uh, and so on. But I, I do sense that this could be his season to mm -hmm. really make a, a mark Mm -hmm. And um, that battle between him and Matthew Leversidge mm -hmm. was uh, was one to really enjoy. Mm -hmm. And of course, then you have Connor Rangi starting to come in to his own. You know, a bit of wind in the sail towards mm -hmm. the end of the race, and uh, it was a very good race. Yeah, mm -hmm. what an introduction to the season for the sprint cars yeah. and and the young guys mm -hmm. uh, or the rookies. Not one of them disgraced themselves. Yeah. I think it's also quite interesting, those three cars at the front we just spoke about there, all undergoing some kind of colour change and some variation this year as well, so how good do they look? Oh, there's some real hot rods, isn't there? Yeah. Boy, it's, um, you know, the um, colour schemes, uh, the graphics, 
it's just unbelievable. You know, gone are the days where you filled the spray gun up with black and then got some <laughs> white paint and carved a number onto a car. Yeah. Those things are, are works of art, mm -hmm. are beautiful. Moving on in our review section, we're going to take a quick look at the Ellesmere meeting we saw a glimpse of earlier. They were hosting rounds of the quarter midget series and the new TQ Tri series last Sunday, and the wingless sprints were also out there in support. The feature results there, the TQ feature, went to Jeremy Webb, second place Jaden Corkle, and third place Jess Morris. A great result there for Jess. Quarter midgets were won by Lake and Thompson. Second place went to Ryan Gallagher and third Jackson Clark. And the wingless sprints was taken out by Kane Jemmett. Danny Livingston from Invercargill picked up second and third place went to Andrew Gregg. AJ, when the track is right out there, it's hard to beat the quality of racing that that place produces. Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm an Alasmere boy, so I'm awfully <laughs> proud of what they've achieved. Not that I get out there particularly often, but um, it's always had a reputation for having a good track. And that goes right back, um, you know, 20, 30 years when old Dr. Dirt, Salwyn Burt, used mm -hmm. to go out there and, and do his thing. And it, it is difficult land out there. Mm -hmm. Very stony, not unlike <laughs> Ruapuna. Yeah. But they just seem to have this ability through the week to get so much moisture into it. Mm -hmm. um, but it is very exposed to the wind. Mm -hmm. and, and that's one of the things. But the track just widens up beautifully. Mm -hmm. And I dare say by the end of the show, mm -hmm. you've got them rowing right around the pickets. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a great place to go and watch speedway racing. Mm. Of course, their next meeting out there is the round of the Hydrolink War of the Wings. So with sprint cars headed out there, it's bound to be a big show. It's now time to announce the winners of the Share and Win giveaway for this weekend. So our 10 winners of our adult family passes this weekend are Sue Shirley, Chris Best, Louise McKinlay, Donna Payne, Becca Roberts, Sue Bayard, Vanya Brisbane, Trevor Ball, Michael Wood and Jacinta Rusing. So those 10 people have won a single adult pass to this weekend's Canterbury Champs, so congratulations. All you need to do is stop by the ticket booth on your way in the main gate and collect those from the VIP window with some valid photo ID. Now we're going to take a look at the Ranch Bar and Grill preview of the week. This Saturday is the Avon Insurance Canterbury Championships, which due to the rain out a couple of weeks ago is now also featuring honours for the Avon City Ford King of the Clay, as well as the Dalton Sprint Car Summer Slam. So AJ, it's, it's shaping up to be a pretty stacked event with, with lots on the line for these drivers. Yeah, lots on the line and boy, some uh, trophy cabinets are going to get a bit of a, uh, a feed after the weekend too, aren't mm -hmm. they? But it's the only way to go, you know, put more on the line and, mm -hmm. and start looking at the numbers that mm -hmm. are responding to it. Um, again, I'm, I'm blown away by the entry lists, uh, mm -hmm. really strong. Mm -hmm. yeah, we hear all this gloom and doom about the economy and so mm -hmm. on, but obviously... Uh, there's a few people that have stopped eating to keep mm. their race cars going. Mm. And we're okay with that too, oh, because we're yeah. the more the merrier yep. is, is our motto this week, with almost 90 competitors registered to hit the track tomorrow night at Ruapuna Speedway. So taking a look at some of these entry lists, AJ, another large field of quarter midgets as well. Those front runners there, Jackson Kedsley, Jackson Clark, Brody Morris, of course, Ryan Gallagher picking up a feature win at Ash Burden a couple of weeks ago. There's plenty up in the mix there um, at the front of the field in the quarter midgets now. Yeah, it's a good result for young Ryan too, mm. you know, for all these kids. You know, they don't get a P to participate in speedway mm. racing. You know, it is about winning, it, mm. it's about achieving. It's also um, a whole lot about learning the craft as you go. And, mm. you know, it's going to be very, very competitive. I, I sense that we're going to have like three specific groups. You mm -hmm. know, you're going to have the, the experienced kids that can go a little bit faster. Then mm -hmm. you've got the middle bunch, which is going to be awfully competitive. <laughs> and then you're going to have a little group at the back there who mm -hmm. are just learning the craft and mm -hmm. you know, watch them join the middle group very, very quickly. Yeah. So our TQs once again boasting over 20 cars with plenty of experience sprinkled throughout there, AJ. Obviously that crash at Ellesmere probably didn't help a lot of guys putting, putting in some work this week to get ready to go for Canterbury Champs. But James Thompson has picked up the Canterbury Champs the last couple of years at Ruapuna Speedway not on the entry list this year. So we will see a fresh face for the TQ Canterbury Champs and there's plenty that are gonna try and grab it. Yeah, it's a shame that James isn't gonna be there because uh, he certainly had something. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the TQs are gonna be a little more open mm -hmm. uh, with the results this year. Mm -hmm. um, obviously you've got Caden Barker and Jeremy Webb, mm -hmm. but um, you know the next group of drivers coming through are more than capable mm -hmm. of 
uh, and, uh, well, it's not even going to be an upset, is it? You mm. know, they're capable of grabbing a result. Mm -hmm. um, Barker and Webb are going to have to really wheel those things along. Mm. And I was quite looking forward to seeing the battle shape out between the two of them in the feature a couple of weeks ago, so hopefully we get a rematch of that. We've also got the modified sprints, of course, which we've spoken quite highly about this season so far at Methanol Madness. They've got plenty of cars and there's lots of rookies as well, but I think, I think they seem to be kind of working together in a way that, uh, that's really productive for the class as well. They've got their series going on, so plenty of action happening in the modified sprints and we've got Jaden Fraser coming from Invercargill on the entry there as well, AJ, and we know how quick he is when he comes up. Oh, he's good, isn't he? Mm. And he'll be the cat among the pigeons. But yeah, the internal promotion that they're doing and mm. looking after themselves, it's mm. almost a bit of a throwback, uh, you know, a, a couple of decades where mm. everyone in the class is helping everyone. Mm. You know, there's no set agenda mm. apart from we need this class to grow. Mm. And it ebbs and flows numbers wise down south. Mm. You know, Christchurch is a hotbed for them. Mm. But Jaden Fraser, he's going to carry mm. that flag from the south mm -hmm. very well. Mm. It'd be great to see him and Liam Astle battle as well. The wingless sprints boast a bigger field this weekend, so that'll be very interesting. I'm excited to see Corey Duckmanton obviously picking up that heat win. He's feeling pretty comfortable in the car now, but we've also got Kane Jimmett in the field, which we know that he's been very competitive the last couple of weeks. Yeah, really competitive. Um, as long as the duck has stopped celebrating, <laughs> uh, he'll be there or thereabouts. But what have we got? Half a dozen mm -hmm. drivers from down south. Mm. And, and again, a little bit like the modified sprints, you know, the class around the South Island are working together, mm -hmm. um, just promoting themselves mm -hmm. and, and making their racing a whole lot more attractive. Mm -hmm. It's good, but what they do is they just add that little bit of an edge. And mm -hmm. so we've got these six drivers that come, they add something different. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the Christchurch guys are going to have to really watch out. Mm -hmm. Shooter Hawkins is my pick this mm -hmm. week. Definitely can never go past Shooter Hawkins when we're talking about the V6 wingless sprints. Always bound to put on a show as well. The Midgets, once again, their Canterbury Championships up for grabs is, is pretty highly contested as well. AJ, I think that after Ben Morgan's performance at Ropuna a couple of weeks ago, I think it'll be pretty hard to, to look past him a little bit. But of course, there's guys like Liam McCubrey, Jay Chadwick with um, Kaz on the, on the wrenches as well. They've been very competitive. So it's really anyone's game. Oh, you have Kaz Townsend in your back pocket. And <laughs> You know, boy, that's worth a few horsepower. Mm. Um, never underestimate Liam McCubrey mm -hmm. and with Selwyn Everett. You know, the winningest driver in Ruapuna history mm. is Selwyn Everett, and he's got a box of tricks that mm. you, you need a bloody forklift to carry <laughs> around. Um, they're so cunning, they're so clever. They're also very mm. calculated yes. with how they do it. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I do sense that it is Ben Morgan that mm. is going to be setting the pace. Mm. Hopefully we see a good battle at the front of the field and we just need some luck to go Liam's way. I'm sure he would probably agree with that and it should be very interesting to see how the midgets play out this weekend. Now, a pretty large field of sprint cars with plenty of talent sprinkled throughout there as well, AJ. Joel Myers Jr. and Max Guilford make their return to Ruapuna this weekend. How good. <laughs> how good is this? And, and, and also, again, you know, you look at the South Island mm -hmm. drivers that are, you know, just sort of all accumulating. We've got... Mm -hmm. Jacob McIntyre and Shannara Stronach from down the line mm -hmm. coming up. We, we don't see a lot of drivers from down south mm -hmm. making their way to Ruapuna, but there are two that have said, you know, mm -hmm. we know if we want to go fast, we've got to be there. Mm -hmm. But the local drivers are going to be ready for this. Uh, yeah, we mentioned Caleb Bourne mm -hmm. earlier. Um, you know, you cannot look too far past Connor Rangi. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be a big season for Connor. Mm -hmm. But you, you put in there Joel Myers Jr. and Max Guilford, mm. and uh, it's a very good field. Mm. Looking at some of these other entries as well, Kyle Glover, Dylan Fawzi, and Bailey Clive making his debut at Ruapuna in the sprint car. It'd be very cool to see him take the green flag, not able to be there for opening night, but there's plenty of people that um, throughout this entry list there, that Bailey Patterson down here as well, and of course Gus Dawson coming back as well. So there's plenty sprinkled throughout. There's talent and, and a lot of pace throughout this field. You're really looking forward to seeing Bailey Patterson. He, he showed... Um, occasionally some real pace. He's mm -hmm. a very, very good race car driver in mm -hmm. a number of disciplines. Mm -hmm. But uh, if things go his way, he's going to make a few really sit up. Mm -hmm. um, we did say in the last show about Dylan Forsey, oh, the second mm -hmm. season blues, are, are they going to happen? Mm -hmm. I think that team is strong enough and they've got the gear mm -hmm. to sort of really work their way through it. Um, the likes of Kyle Glover and, um, and so on, you know, the more laps they get, mm -hmm. the better they're going to be. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's no uh, fate accompli that 
you know, Joel Myers is going to walk away with this. Um, mm. He is very race fit, mm. and that's something our guys don't have. Mm. Of course, the, the advantage there of both him and Max having a lot of experience over the winter racing in America, they've kind of almost come off a full season of racing and straight back into another one. So there's, there's no downtime for those guys. They've, they've been busy working at it. No, and uh, let's hope that Max has fully recovered from the injuries that he received up there in the States. You know, he, he got pretty bashed around, um, but he's tough as, you know, old goat's knees, isn't he? Mm -hmm. he he's, a, he's a tough rooster. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it may actually be quite a battle that goes on who is going to be the number one driver mm -hmm. for Dan Anderson Motorsport this year because mm -hmm. Max Guildford, um, he gets big raps from a lot of people mm -hmm. and... Uh, He's learning every race, and he's obviously formed a really good combination mm -hmm. with Dan Anderson and the team. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, watch out for Max. Mm. A lot of drivers wanting to get their hands on the Canterbury Championships this weekend at Ruapuna. There's plenty to look forward to, AJ. We've got the fan zone, the clown will be there. Plenty of ha things happening um, trackside, and as well as all of the drivers that we've just mentioned, and many, many more that will be there. What are some kind of highlights that you think might come out of this weekend with the Avon Insurance Canterbury Champs? I think the competitive nature mm -hmm. uh, and how competitive all the fields are. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you really just can't go and write three names down for each <laughs> class and say, these are the three mm -hmm. who are going to win it. Mm -hmm. It's really open. Um, you know, let's see what the weather has done to the racetrack. Mm -hmm. um, the forecast, you know, for later in the week isn't so good. Mm -hmm. But uh, Chris Jemmett's actually pretty smart when he puts the track down. I, I suspect that they'll roll it really hard, let the weather go mm -hmm. over it and so on. And that'll help the competitive nature. And, uh, you know, actually, let's hope that it opens up a multi-lane mm -hmm. racetrack as well uh, so that every class can use every inch of the race mm -hmm. surface. Absolutely. So that concludes tonight's episode of Methanol Madness brought to you by Ruapuna Speedway. Thank you to AJ for joining us here. We will see you trackside on Saturday. Make sure you can buy your tickets online at ruapunaspeedway.co.nz. But until next time, keep your foot up it.